Welcome back to the Code Wolf, and welcome to the first video of 2025. Now, this year will obviously be huge for AI, so I'm planning videos that provide simplified overviews of various AI ecosystems to help people easily get caught up. In this first video, let's start with an overview of the .NET AI ecosystem, which really exploded over the past year or two in terms of available libraries and frameworks. So in this video, we'll explore the simplest possible overview of the different categories of .NET AI libraries and when to use them. Along the way, we'll also very quickly glance at some basic code examples for context and comparison, but this is not a coding tutorial at all. Check out the links in the description for more of that content on my channel, and let's get started. As a super quick side note, I'm also setting a goal to reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2025. I know we can do this, so please consider supporting the channel to stay tuned for more AI, cloud, and coding content. All right, so I think the easiest way to understand the available libraries is to group them into four categories. I should note that these are not official categories from Microsoft or anything like that. I just think this here is the most logical way to group and understand them. For each category, we'll answer these same basic questions of what is this set of tools, when should I use this option, and what are the relevant libraries. Again, the focus of this video is specifically on .NET SDKs and libraries for AI, rather than broader AI topics like which models and services are out there. None of that is specific to .NET, so we'll discuss those topics in another video. So first we have the official Microsoft AI extensions libraries. And what are these libraries? Well, you can think of these as the AI version of something like Microsoft.Extensions.Azure or .logging libraries, if you've used those before. These libraries enable you to write code using AI abstractions, which then allows you to later swap out which AI model or service you're using without any major code changes. For instance, you could seamlessly switch between connections from an open AI cloud model to a local Olama instance without breaking your code, you just update which service client gets injected or used. And when should you use these extension libraries? Well, due to their reusability, these libraries currently have more limited capabilities and are better suited for common or general AI tasks like working with chat through an iChat client interface, creating embeddings, or executing local functions through the AI model. As for the packages themselves, the most important library in this category is the Microsoft.Extensions.Abstractions, which provides that core set of reusable generative AI classes. Other libraries include the space library as a dependency and use it to provide meaningful functionality, so usually you won't install the abstractions library directly. For example, add the Microsoft.Extensions.AI.Olama or .OpenAI packages to access those respective implementations of the AI abstractions. This is easier to understand through code, so let's take a super quick look. All right, so I have this sample project open, and this includes one project for each of the four categories that we're looking at in our slide presentation there. And this is available on GitHub. It's all set up for you if you wanna follow along. So let's start with this Microsoft Extensions AI project, since that's what we just talked about. And let's look at some of those key concepts in the code here. We're not gonna walk through this line by line and build out an app or anything like that. This is already set up. I just wanna point out a few key concepts that illustrate each of these categories. So in this case, we create an implementation of an iChat client, and that's what's gonna be used to talk to our AI. This iChat client is that abstraction we talked about. It's just an interface that includes different functionality. So further down here, we get the prompt from the user, and then we send that prompt to our AI using this complete streaming async, that's a method on that iChat client interface. So as long as whatever service we wanna use, in this case, an open AI client, as long as it implements that interface, we can just swap this out with something else. So for example, if I were to comment this out and then uncomment this line further down, now we're working with an Azure open AI client. And this is gonna provide another implementation of the iChat client so underneath the surface, it's gonna be using some Azure functionality, and that means the rest of our code will continue to work because it's implementing that same interface, even if the underlying implementation details are for a different service or just slightly different than what we had before. Now, I also want to mention this as chat client. 
this is what is actually converting our client to an iChat client. So right now there's some helpers to assist with this. In the future, we might not need these methods if this were to implement it directly and some packages might already do that. So sometimes you'll see this helper method that just converts things to an iChat client. But the key takeaway here is that we can use these abstractions with different underlying implementations. And then when we swap them out, the rest of our code just continues to work. Next up, we have orchestration frameworks. In simplified terms, orchestration lets you stitch together multiple AI models, agents, or data sources into an AI app that supports all these different flows and behaviors. Orchestration usually involves more advanced AI development. Two of the most popular orchestration frameworks for .NET are Semantic Kernel and Autogen. For example, Semantic Kernel is a pretty general purpose framework that utilizes a set of libraries to let you use connectors to many different AI services and data sources, and it just manages the flow of AI operations across them. Autogen is specifically tailored for multi-agent scenarios. So you should use an orchestration framework when you need to coordinate multiple AI services, agents, data sources, or more complex user prompt flows. Semantic kernel can also be used for general AI purposes in service agnostic ways, just like we saw with the Microsoft AI extensions libraries. So if you already know and love semantic kernel, you can actually use this SDK instead of Microsoft AI extensions in most scenarios, or you might want to think about using semantic kernel for more advanced reusable AI scenarios that aren't currently supported by Microsoft AI extensions. To use semantic kernel or autogen, you just install the core packages seen here, and then for each framework, you just add whatever connector or plugin packages you'd need for your integrations. It's also worth noting you can integrate orchestration frameworks together, so they don't necessarily have to be used exclusively. Let's take a look at an example. Okay, so now let's look at an example of semantic kernel. So let's open up that program file. And in this code, we're constructing a kernel. And this kernel is what allows us to add connectors and adapters and it handles orchestration for us. It's sort of this central little command center that helps us do all kinds of things with AI in our app. And so in this case, we're telling the kernel to get us a chat completion service, and then we're getting a prompt from the user and using that chat service to talk to our AI. So this is a really simple flow using semantic kernel, but once you have this kernel object, you can start adding different packages and different connectors and plugins. So up here we're using chat completion, but there's so much you can do with this. And that kernel will provide different things for orchestration that you can use down in your app. And so this offers functionality way beyond what we saw with our simple reusable extensions AI library. So I encourage you to explore semantic kernel. It's sort of its own mini framework and it's really powerful and can do all kinds of things. Next, we have the Azure AI services category of libraries. These are official Microsoft libraries for .NET, each designed for very specific Azure AI services. So you'll use these packages whenever you want to connect to Azure OpenAI or some other specialized Azure AI service. Simply install the corresponding package or packages for the service you're trying to integrate with. The most popular library is the Azure OpenAI package, which essentially provides a wrapper around the standard OpenAI package to connect to OpenAI models hosted in Azure and then enable Azure benefits such as identity authentication. However, there are plenty of other libraries here to connect to very specific Azure AI services, such as Vision, Speech, Translate, or Search. Now, you might be thinking, well, the powerful Azure OpenAI GPT models can do many of the things on this list, such as translations, so why do we need to work with these other specific libraries and services? Well, these more specific Azure AI services are finely tuned and customized to excel at these specific scenarios, so they're often cheaper, more proficient, and offer more extensive API services for the intended tasks in that domain versus a general purpose model like GPT-4. Let's look at a code example here again. Okay, so this time let's open up our Azure AI services and our program file here. And this one looks a little more complicated, but it's still all the same concepts. It's just a little bit more verbose in the code. So in this case, we're just directly creating an Azure Open AI client. And notice there's no iChat client. There's no abstractions like that. We're just directly using the types from the Azure Open AI package itself. And that gives us access to the full capabilities of this Azure client, or in other words, gives us full direct access to all of the OpenAI model capabilities. 
And so further down here, we're still getting the prompt and we're still uh, generating that chat loop. And so it's the same app, just written directly for Azure OpenAI without any concern for abstractions or reusability. And you might want to do this in cases where you want to access features that are available in this SDK, but not in the extensions library or something more abstract. For example, with this client, we could do something like get image client. So right now image generation is not supported by the extensions libraries. So this Azure client does have other capabilities open. So there's even like an audio client and all kinds of stuff in here. So you'll wanna use the SDK directly when you need that full set of features. Now, the other thing I wanna demo down here is that we're actually using an Azure translation client as well. So this is totally separate from our open AI client. You'll notice up here, we have this azure.ai.translation.txt namespace, and we can see those packages installed here. So there's actually another Azure AI service that has nothing to do with OpenAI accessed down here. So we use our client to send the text that will be translated, and that comes back in German in this case with the uh, DE symbol here. And so this is using AI capabilities out in Azure just with its own specific package and its own specific service. Finally, we have the last category of third-party services, and this is basically an other category in quotes. Although .NET obviously has tons of tools to connect to Azure, you can also, of course, use specific third-party libraries for AI services and capabilities from other providers and platforms. This includes libraries for AI and vector data services like OpenAI models outside of Azure, Amazon Bedrock, third-party Olama or local AI libraries, Autogen, Quadrant, and more. It's also worth noting that Semantic Kernel, the orchestration framework we looked at earlier, also provides adapter or connector libraries for many of these services. It's also very important to keep in mind that many AI services out there don't necessarily offer an official .NET SDK, but they do offer a REST API, and that automatically means you can use them with .NET. So don't let that stop you if there isn't an official library. Let's look at one last code example here. Okay, so the last code demo I want to look at here is this non-Azure AI services, kind of hard to name, but it's basically other or third-party services not related to Azure. You can see we're referencing namespaces from two different packages here. So over in our project file, we have Olama Sharp, which is an Olama-specific package for .NET. So this, again, is not all that concerned with uh, reusability across different services. It's just specifically designed for Olama. And then we have the vanilla open AI package, so the non-Azure open AI. And we use both of those packages to connect to different models in this code. So for example, here we're directly creating an open AI client, no abstractions from Microsoft Extensions AI or anything like that. We just create our open AI client with our open AI key. And then we have our same loop here where we get the user's prompt, and then we print out the response back from the AI, all just directly using a third-party library outside of Azure directly with that package. And then further down here, we do the same thing with Olama. So I've created regions here if you wanna collapse these, but basically we set up a Olama API client. So this is a client directly accessing our local Olama instance. You can see the local host here. And then we specify our model. And again, we just have our classic chat loop. So these are two third-party packages that have nothing to do with Azure. .NET can do all kinds of AI things without Azure and you can take a look at that yourself as well. So download this app and play around with it and have fun. I hope you found this video really useful. Remember to download the GitHub repository and please consider supporting the channel either through a subscription or joining a membership or hitting that like button or leaving a comment. Just anything works. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.